Ready crew coordination is one of the most critical skills a combat helicopter pilot can have. It enables a crew to squeeze every ounce of capability from their aircraft. Today I'm going to give you a few right. tips to allow you and your crew to make the most of the hind. Okay. The MI-24 is a welcome addition to the DCS lineup, both because it's an iconic aircraft, but also because it finally gives us a proper helicopter gunship experience with the addition of a multi-crew capable cockpit. Most helicopter players may not have much experience in managing a cockpit as the Huey, quite frankly, didn't require a whole lot of coordination to do its thing. The Hind, however, needs a competent crew, so let's talk about it. 1. Constant Communication You can't go wrong with over-communicating your intentions. Even if it's just your planned maneuvers, such as turns and headings, letting your crewmate know what you're doing will help them help you. They can point out when you deviate from your intentions, or maybe provide better ways to get done what you want. Divvy up cockpit responsibilities. Direct the other crew member to do what you need done. If you're the pilot on the controls and the other guy can do something for you, tell him what you need or him or her to do. Unfortunately, the hind doesn't have a lot of options for this as far as lights or systems, but building this habit will pay dividends when the Apache arrives. Radio management. Probably the best thing that a well-seasoned crew can do is manage the radios. The pilot on the control should mostly focus on talking to your wingman or other aircraft maneuvering in close proximity, as well as making any ATC calls. The other crew member is best suited to communicate with the supported ground force or other aircraft operating in a support role, such as overhead casts and ISR platforms. Keeping your head on a swivel. A good crew is always looking for hazards to flight, either man-made, natural terrain, or other aircraft. Even if you're not the one flying, make sure you're helping your pilot look for obstructions and calling them out by distance, direction, altitude, and providing avoidance direction if required. Additionally, if you're not going to be looking out, let your crew member know by announcing that your focus is inside, meaning you're looking inside the cockpit to flip switches, look through the sight, or just fishing snacks out of the flight suit. Engagements It's critical that during a direct fire engagement, the crew is focused on proper maneuver and safety of flight. During diving attacks with rockets and gun, the pilot not on the control should assist the pilot with airspeed callouts, obstacle avoidance, watching for return fire, and ensuring the pilot doesn't get target fixated and drive them into the dirt. During missile engagements, crew coordination is critical. Before starting your run, discuss the plan briefly. How many missiles are you planning to fire? Which way are you planning to egress? Which targets are the priority? The pilot should maneuver the aircraft to get the nose near the target, then direct the observation doors open. Help the gunner find the target by getting that sight in the right area, then assisting by directing movement via the sight sync function. Announce any large movements prior to making them, and keep the gunner updated on what's happening outside as he's hyper-focused on what's on his screen. Gunner, the same goes for you. Let the pilot know what you need him to do to get the aircraft in optimal firing position. The pilot should do one more scan of the area and ensure that there are no hazards to affect the launch, then inform the gunner that he is clear to fire, giving him the launch authority to fire when his own parameters are met. If the situation changes, announce it quickly to the gunner. Remember, he can't see anything that's going on outside of the target area. Once the engagement is complete, direct the door's closure, or announce its closure, before banking the aircraft hard to avoid any ground fire. Splash. Doors right, closed. Close Alright, two ones breaking left. Another trick I've been using when flying with other people is to set up a separate Discord channel or make a direct call via Discord. Uh, that way you can replicate basically the intercom in the aircraft, the uh, voice operated intercom, and you don't have to mess with SRS and changing channels, so it just makes life a lot easier for that. The bottom line is communication, and a lot of it. And the best way you can communicate with me is to hit that subscribe button and put down in the comments what tricks and tips have been working for you and your co-pilot. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.